Welcome to the Photo Flunky Show. Today we're going to be talking about Canva for photographers. Hi there. Welcome to the Photo Flunky Show. My name is William Beam. Hi, my name is Lee Beam. And as I said, today we're going to be talking about Canva for photographers and if you're not aware, Canva is an online web service that allows you to create a number of different types of graphics. And for photographers, some of us may not necessarily have a lot of experience with graphic design. And I think we're going to tell you some of the reasons why Canva may work out for you if you're not familiar with it. But before we get into that, let me just give you the usual preamble. And that is that show notes for this episode are going to be available at williambeam.com slash episode 61. And you can get a transcript of the show there for free. Of course, there are going to be links to subscribe you can go to photoflunky.com as well and find a podcast player with this and all of our previous episodes. Also, I want to let you know that I've got a free ebook for you. It is called Creative Portraiture, and it's not necessarily about a technical aspect of creating portraits. It is more about the emotional and the creative side of portraiture and what you can do. It is yours for free. You can find it at williambeam.com slash free book. Feel free to share it, pass it around. Hope you enjoy it. Yes. All right. For you, unlimited for friends. Unlimited, yes. Okay, why don't we go into uh, basically using Canva. And I know a lot of you probably already have at least Photoshop. I know a, a number of people got the photographer's deal or bundle with uh, Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop. And Photoshop will do everything that Canva will do, and it will do more than Canva will do. So why in the world would you want to spend your time using Canva instead of going to do things in Photoshop? That's mm -hmm. one of the things that we're going to be looking at. What you can do is use Canva to create graphic designs for a number of different uses, and we'll be going in through some of those. All right, well, let's start off with, you know, why use Canva or Photoshop? And, and Lee, you've really been kind of on a tear with Canva lately for a lot of the things that you're doing for your Carefree Runner site. Yes, and they're just loving me. They get an email every day. We see that you're using it so much. Why didn't you try the business version? <laughs> <laughs> and and there, is a, there is a free version of Canva, and that's what you're using. Yes. And then I'm using the paid version, which is Canva for work. And I think it's roughly about $10 a month for that. Yes. But we'll, we'll get into the differences for that. But so Canva knows that you're using it, but also the people that are following you on social media for your running really know what you're doing too. Yes. They may not necessarily know how you're doing it, but you're kind of using it to build your audience. And I'm starting to get a very distinct style. Um, I've, I've gotten, I like to call it an alternative outlook on life sometimes. The way I see things is a little, I like to present things from a different perspective. I think that's really the best way to explain it. And that shows in the photos that I take, but I've also developed a bit of a style on how I put things together when I, I present them. And this is not like a, a formal business where I'm, you know, it's an office building of, attorneys or something where I'm having to have things very graphically just so I'm really free to well, you're do as I please. You are building your own business and you've got an audience that's starting. I mean, not only just other people who are running, but you've got vendors who are in the running community that are coming to you now yes. and recognizing you. And part of that really is because of how you're using Canva and graphic design tools to share your message. Yes. So before we get into using the tool itself, what I wanted to ask you about was what are you what are you creating why are you creating it and how is it helping you build i'm using three social media platforms i would say primarily instagram and now twitter is probably on a par and is pro as um, from the way i'm looking at things it's going to overtake instagram in terms of um reach and how much time and and energy is invested in there because it seems to be a lot more rewarding but they are different they serve different purposes to the same end if that makes sense it does uh, facebook Facebook's there purely for the benefit of people who don't use either Twitter or Instagram. I don't think it's a very big market and it's a place where I'm going to put the least energy into it. So I'm going to speak primarily about Instagram and Twitter because that's that's where I'm. All right. So you're what, what are you creating? And are you're not necessarily creating the same thing on both, are you? Because they're different shapes. They are different shapes. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a photo and I might have to rearrange and completely recompose it for one to the other because the one is almost twice as wide and the same height as the other. If you stack them together, you've got the square and then you've got the very short and, and wide crop as well. So that sometimes means when I take a photo, I might stack things together, arrange them or use an angle to get something square. And then I get something, you know, in portrait mode that actually has some wiggle room to crop at the top and bottom. And that often means um, moving myself or moving 
the subjects around. Okay. So you've got your photos and you're, you're taking them in mind with how you're going to use them. Yes. And you're doing this on, on a pretty regular basis. So like sometimes like after every run, and then sometimes if you get some new supplements that come in from one of the vendors or just basically if you've got something to share. Yes. How important is it that you share and how often do you need to share something? I was sharing two to three times a week. I found when I was sharing three times a week that my I was having a lot more success in terms of engagement. And right now for the last two weeks or not even for the last, let's say not quite 10 days, I've been sharing pretty much every day, at least once a day. There have been times where I've posted something twice a day and I do take a day off on the weekend. It doesn't seem to hurt me if I've got the consistency going. I'd say that my um, my audience has doubled in size, as has my engagement in that short space of time. So basically, you've got to be working. You've got to be creating, coming up with new material. And people are even asking, oh, where did you find your photos and things like yes, that? Somebody sent me a message the other day and wanted to know where I get my cool quotes and, and um, images from. And, and that's, I guess, one of the first lessons is you're creating your own. The quotes are from you. Yes. Based off of, I guess, conversations you're having online with your community. Or things that come to me when I'm running and I'm trying to push myself through. Sometimes you have to do a bit of self-motivation and I realize something while I'm doing it. It's not that bad or it's okay. And as I'm talking myself through it, I think, do you know, what? everyone should have an op opportunity to use this. Okay. So you're taking your photos, but then the photos themselves are not just the whole share. And it's not like you're putting up the the quotes or whatever, whatever communication you've got in text. And then there's the photo. You're combining them with graphic design that you're building in Canva. I am. Now, the first thing that I've done is um, we we got a font that I chose for mm -hmm. my signature, which suits it. That signature is going on everything. So it's not a watermark. I'm actually, um, William made a transparent black and a white one for me because I have no idea how to do it because I don't really care for Photoshop. It looks too time consuming. It's fiddly. Come on. It is fiddly. It's, it's, there's and, a lot to fiddle um, with. Yes. <laughs> and um, the first thing I do is I, I, I put that in the, usually in the bottom right of my uh, image. And I want that there. The reason I want that there is I actually encourage people to share. So mm -hmm. if they like, especially when I'm doing quotes, it's free to use, share, spread it around. But I've also made sure that the signature is, is kind of, I don't want to say it's obnoxious, but if you try to crop it, I make sure that it's positioned in such a way that you either lose some of your quote you know, if you try and get rid of it to pass it off as your own or you, you're you going to lose something. I'm sure if you want to spend the time in Photoshop, well, you could, but... There's always a way, but most people aren't going to do it's that. It's just not worth it. And, and the community they're going to primarily is not really going to be people who are using Photoshop. They're just going to take it and pass it. They're going to take it and pass it. I've got no problem with people do doing that, but I've put my signature on there. I don't always, but I usually have something. For example, I'm counting down to a marathon now. So for the last, I'd say, three days, two days, the fourth day, I've had a kind of a very consistent little way of the number displaying of how many days. It sometimes come in different shapes and formats, but it's there, there's a tie but in that's there. Part, that's part mm -hmm. of your message is I'm counting down to a marathon. Yes. And people who are in that community that understand, like, even if they don't do a marathon, they understand preparing for a race. And there's yes. like so many days you're looking forward yes. to it. They're actually coming back and encouraging you and following you just because you're sharing the fact that you're counting down to the marathon. They really are. But now you have to make that image twice in Canva because you've got two different photos. It's not a case of taking that. I do not take the same photo. I know you're going to touch on Canva for business mm -hmm. and explain the options you have there. For me, the most simple thing to do is to make the image twice. I just make a note of what I've used in each one. Sometimes you have to use a different shape, but I try and keep the font consistent and the message consistent when, well, I, that's, when that's I do Well, kind of a branding thing. Mm -hmm. like if you, you don't want to change up your colors or your typeface too much for a brand, you want people to recognize, oh, that's something from, in your case, Carefree Runner. Yes. You really don't like Photoshop, but if you had to build the same things without Canva, what would you be going through? I would be using Photoscape. It's free. What is it that you get on Canva that makes you decide that, okay, that's the place that you want to do it instead of Photoscape? I like the fact that it saves your images in a collection together. There have very rarely, but occasionally been some malfunctions where something has just disappeared. Once or twice it's returned about a week later, but... It wasn't there, but generally what I like is that I've got all my images there, even though I back them up onto the hard drive, I can go into Canva remotely. You know, I could do it on my phone and download one of my saved images if I don't have it on my phone and then share it on Instagram straight from there. So I, I do, I think that's an advantage. Also, in addition to the things that you can upload, you know, for your, for your graphics, Canva has a number of features that I think provide a lot of elements that you want to use to build. So for example, if you don't have a photo for your, of your own, they have a few free photos and then they've got stock photos that yes. you can get. 
And those stock photos are a dollar a piece. Yes. Some some cases, you know, a, a buck for a photo, it, it's worth that to do your message. But it's a bit of a trick because if you want to use that photo again, it's another dollar. So they just, like, if you want to make one for Twitter, one for Facebook, one for Instagram, they, you know, it's dollar, dollar, dollar. Unless you're smart enough to remember, okay, download the photo first and upload it as your own. Yeah. Look, when I said I'm using the free version, I'm using the free version. I've been using this for, what, over a year now? Yes, but you, but also you're never, using... Never paid for anything. No, you're you're uploading your own photos. So it's not like you're out there searching for stock. Yeah. And that's why I'm thinking most photographers, they want to show their own photos. Yes. If you're a photographer and you're getting stock photos, it, it might be for a specific purpose. But it's really, you, you want to kind of showcase your own work. Yes. Also, what helps me, I think, is when I go in and I'm planning to do something, I'm taking a photo for a purpose. So already when I'm staging the photo, I have an idea of what I want to achieve, which makes Canva relatively quick most of the time in and out. Sometimes I find that the color doesn't really show up as much and there's not enough contrast or there's something difficult to read and I have to, you know, spend some time working out whatever I didn't get right. But generally, I know what I want to do. I know where I want the, the empty space to be to allow me room to, to put in my graphics or my text mm -hmm. and i think that helps but on the flip side i think canva is a great place to go if you don't really know and you want some prompts or ideas that's one of the things i like about canva if you they have a number of dimensions there for different social media for documents like if you want to do a poster or a letter or a resume or a, a number of different types of things that you might have to design you click on any one of those first off they set all the dimensions for you it's like is this many pixels by that many pixels for what you're going to do yes and then you'll see a whole plethora of different design options that you can use as templates. Yes. If you have Canva for work, you can create your own templates and then reuse those as necessary. But the nice part about even the free version is you'll see a lot of styles that maybe if you don't have a graphic design background, you wouldn't think to create in the first place. Yeah, that's true. I've used a couple of the free um, images just for a, like a faded background because they worked well because they were simple. And I mean, it's, it is a nice starting place. I think it's a wonderful starting place. And some of the uh, things out there is like for, if we look at fonts, they have a lot of the Google fonts out there. So you've got a number of choices for what you can use. I find the fonts is one area where they're severely lacking. There's, they have a lot, but they don't necessarily have the ones you want. I'd like to be able to put my own in there. And that's the difference between the free version and Canva for work. So when you have Canva for work, you can upload your own open typeface or TTF fonts in there. And it will promptly say, you know, check here to make sure that you verify that you have the right or license to use this font. Yes. And that's the, the far as, as far as it goes for checking, you know, and you can upload the fonts you want to use and put them in there. As long as you've, you've purchased them or you have the right to use them, you can do that and it'll be part of your Canva for work environment, but you yeah. can't do that with a free version. Here's something else that's nice about Canva. I mean, you were showing me the other day. I thought that it wasn't on the free version. I don't know if it was later added, but it, I was having a look today and it is. You can actually save your image with transparent background. So if you're just mm -hmm. assembling graphics, like you want a logo or a badge or something, you can save it in there, save it onto your hard drive, and then you can upload it back to Canva as one of your saved images and you can um, overlay that onto Right, the, down new creations. the download options are JPEG, PNG, and it's the PNG file type that you can check a box, say make the background transparent, yes. and also you can download as PDF. So yes. you can go ahead and create your signature or whatever you want to be on a PNG and make the background transparent, download that, and then upload it back up, and then you can use that as another one of the elements that you just put on whatever future design you want to do. Yes. So that, that's actually kind of handy, and that's what we were doing with the font. We, we purchased your font on myfonts.com, and made your signature off of that. So it wasn't something that you could have created on Canva because like you said, they have limited fonts. So they didn't have the kind of, you know, for lack of a better word, they didn't have a kind of a carefree, you know, script brush script font that you wanted. No, that's right. I mean, they have a couple of script fonts in there, but it, it didn't fit the style of the brand that you want to create. It didn't, but we, we, yeah, we found a way, there are ways around it. That, that really means going to another tool or purchasing a font and Canva for work so you can upload the font as, as you want. Something else that I'd like to see in there, I was having a look this morning, I uploaded my two, the two versions of my signature, and you've got this little section where you upload your own photos, which is almost exclusively where I work. Mm -hmm. And they're in there. It would be nice if you could arrange them so that the ones that you regularly use are like at the top, because as I'm uploading more things, I'm having to scroll down to find my fonts. I, I think that's one of the complaints I have as well. Canva for work, it makes a difference where you can create your own template. So the things that you want can be in that template. But you're right. If you want to reuse something over and over again, even in the templates, 
if you've got a lot of them, you end up scrolling all over the place to find the one that you're looking for. There's no way to organize your uploads. Now, there is something in Canva for work where you can make folders. So like, for example, I've got, you know, William Beam Photography, I've got Orlando Local and Suburbia Press. So I can make folders for those. And then I can take my graphics or things that I've uploaded. And then basically you kind of drag them to the folder and it'll right. have a tag on them. So you can just see things just for this folder or just for that folder. But again, with a free version, you're you're kind of stuck looking at the whole thing. That's true. For example, we're talking about vendors. Um, I was uh, I was successful in an application um, to participate in the ambassadorship program for this year for one of them. That's a product that I really use and I enjoy. They sent us uh, their little badge, you know, that that gives you the ambassador 2017 on it. When I'm taking product photos of theirs to to do a, to create a social media post. I sometimes use the badge on there as well in the, you know, in the, one of the, the corners. Mm -hmm. And that's really why they've given it to you to use as, as you see fit to, to promote the brand and, and to represent it. And um, that was also a nice thing to be able to have in Canva because there is, there are not a whole lot of um, platforms where you can work and have the ability to do this. I do have Photoshop. I've just never used it. Well, even if you do have Photoshop, I've, I've got Photoshop and I've created some of my designs. In it, but the thing is, I am not a graphic designer and I have a very limited understanding of how to use type, color and uh, other things, elements that really pull this stuff together. I can look at something and say, I like how that looks. And that's one of the things I like about Canvas because there are so many designs out there. I can look at something and say, oh, I like that. I want to do something similar to this. I might want to replace some elephants. 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 I'm not replacing any elephants. <laughs> I might want to replace some elements. I may want to change the font that's being used, but I like the overall design and style. And I can pick and choose something like that and use it for maybe a, a header on a blog post or something for social media. And it prompts me. It gives me guidance. Also, if you go to designschool.com, excuse me, designschool.canva.com, they have a wonderful blog that shows you a lot about graphic design. They'll show you how to use fonts and typography. They'll show you how to use colors. They'll show you, well, let me, let me go and pull up the page here. I mean, social media engagement, it's not necessarily just about designing something. They'll show you how to use it in practice. So they'll tell you how to engage in social media. They've got, uh, here's an article, 10 tips to teach yourself design. I've, I really enjoy this because I don't have any background or training in graphic design. I'm learning quite a lot about these articles from designschool.canva.com. And not only do they show you what they think, but they'll also take posters or examples from other people and they'll put them in the article and they'll explain, here's why this works. And then you can kind of take that and it, it gives you a little bit of, for lack of a better word, it gives you some inspiration to create your own graphic design elements. Let's talk about some of the things that Canva just doesn't do for you though. And one of the ones I put down as an example is text on a curve. Yes, that would be so nice if you could curve it. It lets you space out the line, you know, the letter spacing. You can adjust the letter spacing. Let you can adjust the letter spacing and the line spacing, but you cannot put it onto an arc. No, you can't. And it's the, the tools that they have there are basic. I mean, you can very easily change a line to all uppercase or all caps, and, and then change it back again. You can left, right, and center justify things. But that's, that's kind of the limit of it. It's like, if you want to really get tricky with your designs, if you want to make something that's arcing around a circle or has some kind of a curve into it, I don't see any tools that really let you do that. Some of the things I do like is that they have a number of shapes. Yes. And when you're trying to assemble something, I look at some of the designs and thought, all right, how in the world am I going to get these things going diagonally? And I realize all they've done is they've taken a triangle shape or something like that, filled it with a color, and then kind of dragged it from one side to another. Yes. And then you can get, a, you know, a bit of graphic design on your background to, to use and, and kind of break up the way things look. You use a, a number of the shapes in your uh, in your social media designs, too. I do. And I use them often for inserting text if my background isn't perfect or just to make make it stand out. Um, I, I'm, I like to play with the transparency on my shapes when I put them in. So I generally don't have it 100 percent opaque. I like to have it. I like to be you to be able to see the the background showing through. Yeah, and and that's something I do as well. I, for example, the last couple of posts I did on the Orlando locals, like I just took an orange square and dragged that to be a rectangle over the whole post. You know, I had my photo on the background, and then just lower the transparency. So I've got my image there that I'm using. It kind of shows what I need to to display, 
but it's not the main focus because the text that I had was too big just to put over a photograph and it would have been too clunky. Yes. But I put that over there and, and lower the lower the uh, opacity a little bit. So I've got some transparency of the photo, but I can still put my text on it and be seen. And I guess it's not the case where you're using a photograph as the photo is the showcase itself in most cases, but it's the photo is there to support your message. Yes, that's exactly how it is. And that's really when, for photographers, that's when you're going to be using Canva. It's not so much a retouching tool. It is not something that you're going to be using. I guess you could use it just to shape your photograph, you know, to crop it for Canva. Unless you crop it, really, there are no photo editing properties in there. But you could crop it in Lightroom if you know the dimensions. You could crop it in Photoshop. So it's not really for that. It is really if you're going to use your photos as a communication tool for a different message. Yes. And that's really how we're looking at Canva for photographers. It's not necessarily to showcase your photo as a work of art. It is to use your photo to help promote a message. I think it is very convenient rather than Photoshop. I, I still love to use Photoshop for finishing my photos. But when I want to use my photo in a design, I find myself going to Canva simply because there are so many elements there that already work or, or prompt you to how you can use your photo to communicate a message. And it's uh, it's been a quick and easy way to get things done. Thank you for listening to the Photo Flunky Show. I hope you enjoyed it. Show notes are going to be available at williambeam.com slash episode 61. And of course, you can find a transcript of the show there for free. You want to subscribe to the podcast? Of course you do. We'll have links on the site and also at photoflunky.com. So you can subscribe on iTunes, Google Play Music, Blueberry, Stitcher, and other places. Also, don't forget, get your free copy of my book, Creative Portraiture. Just go to williambeam.com slash free book. Thank you so much. We'll see you again next week.